Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Klü. Welcome to my talk about uh, the modeling of a fixed firefighting system uh, containing an eco fire. First of all, where this work has been done is the project Zimmerman. We have a German research project with three main partners there on the left. This is Fortic Fire Projection, the company Erect from Stufa, it's an association for underground transport facilities, and the federal uh, material agency uh, BAM. We also have associated partners from, from France, uh, the USCG, and the Deutsche Bahn, and the firefighters uh, from Munich as well as subconstructors like IFAB, which play a larger role in the fire chest, obviously, and they're part of this work then as well, and it's relevant. Uh, all work was bonded by the German Ministry and um, yes. uh, Just a few words about the principle of high-pressure water mist, which is a firefighting system we are modeling. It contains of very, very small water droplets, obviously, and so uh, the um, like it's the diameter of a uh, micrometer range, and uh, because of this, they can uh, evaporate at a high rate. So, uh, if a lot of water evaporates, it can take a lot of energy away from the um, fire, and at the same time, displace the ox oxygen at the real, real, real close to the fire. So, and there's another effect. Or it can uh, go influence a fire, and water can cool the material directly at uh, the surface. So if water would get there, they can have another effect over there. Uh, it obviously you can see in the picture from a fire test that there is a person very, very close standing to the fire, and the person is being able because it's the atmosphere over there is cooled down massively. The fire chests in Zurin, which is the uh, heart of Zurin, because we had a large fire chest pro program, uh, which mainly uh, involves uh, lithium ion batteries, both in burning behavior characteristics and uh, firefighting, as we tested which firefighting agent uh, worked best or worked with uh, lithium, lithium ion batteries. Uh, what was just one of them. And uh, we already tested like CNG fires and the influence and what we're talking about more vehicle fires and how to firefight them. Uh, some of the results concerning the vehicle fires is that uh, vehicles have changed quite a lot over the last years and decades, especially like from the material side, there are a lot of more combustibles in uh, modern cars than it used to be. It's getting larger as well, heavier. And uh, yeah, of course, there are new technologies how to uh, drive a car. Like, at least, I think your battery will get quite fame, uh, popular right now. Uh, the fire protection uh, in car parks is usually. Uh, done with prescriptive guidelines and which is something we think that these guidelines are not up to date for when it comes to the influence of the vehicles that the vehicles really have right now in terms of fire and on the same page we uh, made a proposal for a new vehicle design fire uh, which should cover all engine types and parts really like battery gasoline and uh, which would be used for, uh, for fire protection in car parks. The objectives of the car parks are basically like the structural safety of the building, like high temperatures can threaten uh, the ceiling and the columns, and so uh, eventually the building can collapse, which is a major loss, and if, it's, uh, if there's buildings above it, it's obviously uh, a potential for a disaster. And uh, the other point is that the safety of firefighters entering uh, uh, this, this, these car parks, which are how to, uh, uh, it's, it's not good to see and orientate in it. And uh, if one fire, car fire, one vehicle is burning, that is still a controllable situation, assumed to. And, but if there is a rapid fire spread from one vehicle to another, there very quickly there is a really, really huge fire load. And this can be uh, controlled by 
controlling the temperature in a way, which is one of the main strengths of Wallamist. And so we are getting into with a view to performance based design. How can we do it into a, a simulation with FDS? Yes. Um, which is a picture from our uh, fire test calorimeter. And um, you can see, like, uh, we have the roof to collect the gas, the exhaust gases, and they're drawn out by a uh, forced ventilation with, which, uh, by a, a van which is attached at the end of the duct. And uh, further on, we analyze the gases of the inside the duct, like oxygen, carbon, monoxide, which are the two we present and use in this work. And we have just below uh, the, the mock-up, there's a scale, so we get the total weight of the fire load and over time. And the metal made mock-up covers uh, the fire load from water mist to gas. And we have temperature me measurements basically all over the place. So it's all stacked and uh, in the color of and near uh, the mock-up and everywhere basically. Uh, the fire load, uh, you will see on the left, there is wood pallets as a reference fire load, you know, fire loads, it's in total 24 uh, pieces of it, and uh, we ignited them with two pans of uh, uh, one liter a hectare each, and um, the after then we had uh, the water mist after we had some free burning uh, it for three or for five minutes in two tests, and then we activated the water mist, which uh, again by four nozzles uh, you can see in the picture on the right hand side, um, and they were going for room protection, which is like we're not trying to extinguish the fire or really influence it by the material uh, surface, which is one of the effects I've shown earlier. So, but mainly just get to the, get it to, into the uh, gas temperature near the mock-up because that is a, an effect we can model or we thought we could more easily model than the other one. Uh, this is a uh, model how a uh, short thing about uh, water mist gets into the FDS simulation that's done by a Lagrangian particles as it's sub grid so it has there is another approach and here uh, the particles are induced at the surface of, of a sphere and uh, they are like in the center of the sphere where the nozzle is positioned but like it's kind of some kind of offset to avoid some effects in the absolute vicinity and the whole model of a sphere in code has to be translated and converted into a light sheet and line sheet thing so you can get the orientations of this way uh, into the simulation. Uh, this is just uh, on the right hand side uh, the mock-up, the geometry of the mock-up you can see it is inside and the calorimetry and the exhaust dust and then we just try to build it as much straightforward from the technical documentation as we could including material information on the chart it's shown is uh, the fan curve and get all of that into the model and um, then go on with the more crucial boundary conditions from uh, a fire point of view which is the heat release rate and we gain that from uh, a mass loss the scale we made if you transfer that into a mass loss rate the total rate and then if the feed of combustion and uh, you can see the shots on the right hand side and uh, the model, the, the rent where um, uh, we set the mass, the fuel mass into the simulation is like the red one inside the mock up here, the lake grid right inside the red one. We had some uh, simulations results, and on the left hand side we have uh, the oxygen uh, prediction of, S of FDS, which is uh, the green curve and to for comparison we got both uh, fire chests, the oxygen measurement uh, and we see that it is working quite good 
or fine uh, to predict like uh, the oxygen decrease, especially during the full burn phase, but even continuing after that, uh, after a short period of time, which is how to how the the activation is uh, yeah, in a way worked in the simulation. It, it's still quite good. If we go for the white right side, same fire tests, same simulations, different species, we have carbon monoxide, and it's really underestimated on our uh, approach. So we set a uh, too low uh, CO yield, obviously. And at the same time, you can see that we cannot go with one uh, carbon monoxide yield, obviously, because like, after the activation of one of the concentration of CO rises significantly. Quite okay. Here's some comparisons of uh, the effects we can see uh, in terms of cooling uh, by the water mist. In the first uh, and the green uh, uh, simulation, we got um, just uh, the heat released from the second fire test, which was at that time for like the first five minutes uh, unaffected by uh, suppression. So, so um, when here on the left hand side is the uh, activation of the fire, the, the firefighting system, and then uh, the heat release rate is uh, the first from, uh, from the second fire test, so it's cooled down by the water mist, but it's still rising rather quickly because the, the heat release rate is rising. And we look at the second, the wet uh, simulations tag, and um, then we just have the reduced heat release rate we've measured. We did not uh, get any water mist to it, and in uh, the yellow one, we got both the reduced uh, heat release rate and water mist, so both effects of cooling, and so that underestimates the actual temperature in gray from the fire test. So, some conclusions. Uh, the FDS set up with the experimental data worked just fine for us. Uh, like mentioned, uh, the when simulating water mist, the OUS has to be adjusted, especially to before and after activation of uh, water mist. The two mechanisms for the uh, decrease of gas temperature are like the cooling of the gas phase by the vaporization of water and the reduction of heat release rate, which is caused by the uh, water mist system in a fire test. But the second one has to be, uh, how, how much it is reduced has to be determined by fire tests. Uh, the outlook for uh, what we're doing next with um, the water mist uh, thing, is there are a lot of, uh, some, still some numerical parameters left uh, concerning. We have to get some more details how to use them. Uh, like the one thing is, would be nice to have kind of a live heat release rate calculation uh, in FDS. So, because uh, doing it as a fire test is always, it's, it's tricky to get the right one and it's, uh, so, and one idea would be to use this E coefficient, which is to be determined experimentally. So we're having some experience with that, so we're trying to get into that and see what it works. Then uh, we go further and analyze, of course, the, the experimental data we just gained, and uh, then we try to get a more accurate approach for the heat release rate. And one thing we're right now looking at is to get uh, the oxygen measurement, which um, which we had in the exhaust duct, and try to get that into a heat release rate by uh, uh, oxygen consumption calorimetry, and maybe combine it with the mass loss, and then get a better or good heat release rate. And another major outlook is like we have in productivity, we're going with uh, some kind of guideline to, uh, as, as this should be like the product of the end of uh, our project. To provide general information and suggestions about the fire risks of new energy carriers at different stages and different um, kind of people who are interested in it, like rescue forces, federal authorities, or design planning of structures. 
And of course, uh, we would include uh, CAT and firefighting part, and hopefully we can introduce some of the work we have done so far and continue to work with it uh, with what it means in FTS into that. There was it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. So thank you, Stefan, for that talk. That was great. Yeah. Uh, we'll just wait a minute to get people to come over and look for some questions. I'm sure there'll be some. Water mist has always been challenging in uh, FDS, so I know there may be some. Yeah, thoughts on tell that. me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the right scale, actually, if you look at it in a way, but. Yeah, I guess what what did you find um, to be like some of the most challenging aspects of modeling mist in FDS? Um, one really surprising thing that we really need a lot, a lot of computational time with the particle approach, which really if, even if we can get the fire, uh, get, get calculates fire in a reasonable time, I think uh, the activation of the mist is at that second it really really slows down, and we do not have any high performance computers and try to get it into a, some kind of approach we could make in a way on our workstation and put into the analysis at that point. And, and then of course to, to really get that right with, yeah, with, the, with the physics and how the, how it distribution that was. Generally. Yeah. Um, Kevin McGratton just made a point here in chat about the e-coefficient will probably not work for mist. The droplets must attach to the surface. It was really yeah. just a simple mechanism for larger droplet sprinklers. Uh, uh, okay. Um, it's, it's a really, really good hint for that. So. Yeah. And then the, um, another comment here, the size of the water mist droplets is very, very small. How do you handle this in the model to ensure that the analysis is accurate? Yeah, actually, we, we try to rely on this, this Lagrangian, this particle approach that uh, to, to induce the particles and just we were trying to look from like, uh, not really a larger scale, but from, from the view we get is how to interact with the temperature, which is the first step, how to we calculate the temperatures. And so we do not know everything exactly about the water mist, uh, how it distributes uh, in the gas phase, but yeah, we were living with that for the moment, actually. Mm -hmm. um, one question here, noted in the assessment for case one, or for one case study, the oxygen level dips down to some 5%. Is this possible as most fire combustion cannot sustain when the O2 falls below 19? Well, I don't know about 19, 19 is pretty normal, 19. but yeah. uh, but some lower, you know, something below that. I don't know, probably there's something with, with measurement if, if, if the exhaust gets, uh, yeah, actually, I, I'm not too sure. So okay. for, can I answer that from uh, the point of view? Maybe that's sure. an interaction with mist or before, I don't know. Like maybe vapor disper like the yeah. displacement from water vapor yeah. or something. Um, and then uh, have you considered adding a model for the formation of CO when water is applied? Um, we have not already. We were thinking about how to, to, to get a change uh, with the CO, as I showed, because we, we underestimated really toughly under, uh, roughly underestimated it. And so we're just looking for how we would deal with it. Maybe it's just with another yield or another formation model. With, this is something we'll go for the next study. Yeah, Kevin McGratton's just making a comment here about how FDS has a two-step mechanism for predicting CO production based on oxygen depletion, but it's but he's never used it for a mist system. So, but there is some okay. Yeah, but I take that mechanism. for yeah. yeah. I, I would take that for a hint and maybe check that out uh, the next time. Yeah, that's great. Any other questions or comments from viewers? Well, I'm not seeing anything pop up right now. So thank you very much, Stefan, for your uh, time, for the presentation, for the Q&A. Um, we really appreciate you. it. Yeah, and we'll yeah, be transitioning now. Oh, yeah, okay. for sure, for sure.